All right, so we're going to start on the topic uh, for chapter 16 of electro of electrochemistry, right? So electrochemistry is where we involve, uh, so we take uh, chemical reactions. So chemical reactions that will result, I don't want to say created or gen or like produce or something, so I'm just going to say that result in so chemical reactions that result in electricity right uh, <clears throat> is that when we're when we're dealing with electro uh, chemistry right is that this is going to involve the transfer of electrons right there's going to be some transfer of electrons so we're going to be dealing with oxidation let me respell that here oxidation and reduction reactions right oxidation and reduction reactions that there has to be some flow of electric charge, right? Some flow of electric charge. Now, when we talk about electric charge, oh, there we go. So we talk about electric charge. Electric charge is so the the we we'll call it the unit. So the unit of charge. The unit of charge is. The charge on the proton. So is the charge of a proton. It's the charge of a proton. This proton does have uh, some value here. So the value on that is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs, and I'm just going to use a capital C for that, right? So capital C is um, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and this is the charge of the proton. So <clears throat> the presence of this charge, so this charge is is present uh, or, or generates, this charge generates some electric field. Um, and if, if we think about the proton, proton and electron here, um, or not proton and electron here, but uh, so here is that we have some uh, element that's positively charged and here the protons are kind of giving this outward this is what we're going to consider a, a, an electric field, right? So we're generating here some, uh, and let me write this down. So we'll just say, um, how can we say this? A presence of this charge, the presence of this charge of a proton. So the presence of this charge generates an electric Field, right? Uh, and then we see the opposites here. So if I if we do this, this is negatively charged. <clears throat> right. So the presence of this charge generates this electric field, and the movement of this charge, right? The movement of this charge from the proton, right? The movement of that charge is what we consider the electrical current, right? So let's write that down as well. So we'll say uh, the movement of the charge is electrical current 
right? The movement of that charge is the electrical current, right? And I'll even write it, uh, maybe put something in, in parentheses and we'll say the rate of charge, right? So the movement of this charge is the electrical current. That's the, the rate of the charge. And uh, as far as units go, so the current SI unit, um, uh, so we'll say current here, the electrical current, right? Not like current in present time, like the actual current. The current SI unit is what we know as an ampere, or it's amp for short, right? And we're gonna use a capital A to designate amp. So we have an understanding of, of Coulomb, right? That's the unit of charge of a proton is a Coulomb. And the presence of this charge generates a field around the proton and the movement of that charge is the electrical current, the rate of the rate of that charge, right? And those are what we call amps. So the charge is what is what moves to create that electrical current. Um, and just the opposite, if you guys didn't know, right? So just the opposite, the opposite direction, this is your flow of electrons, right? The current goes one direction and the flow of electrons go the opposite direction. And as far as, as amp goes, so we're look, if we're talking about the rate of the flow of charge, and we're talking about amps, and we're talking about coulombs here, uh, that it is one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. Right, so one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. Uh, we're not going to need that this uh, lecture, but we'll definitely need it next lecture as I don't think we're going to get to um, Nernst equation. So Nernst equation is probably that's going to be a topic for for uh, this Thursday. All right. So if we're if we're looking at a little setup, I'm not the greatest uh, drawer here. I'm thinking. Let's see here. Draw. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna attempt to draw a light bulb. Look at that. It's like 3D almost, isn't it? It's like 4K resolution here. All right. Uh, let me draw a battery. Uh, this end is going to be uh, positive. Uh, this end is back here is negative. I'll get some some wires going to my light bulb here. Wires going to this light bulb here. And the direction of the current, right, the flow of electrical charge here is that we see the current going this direction, right? So this is our current. And I'm going to write current in. <laughs> right, and we'll say, I'll say, I should say the direction of the current. So that is our direction of the current, okay? That's our flow of charge here. And then, like I said before, I did mention earlier um, that here, our flow of electrons is the opposite direction, right? And here is our flow of electrons going in the, in the opposite direction. So, this flow of charge, this flow of charge is generated by what we call electrical potential, right? So our flow of charge is generated by electrical potential, electrical potential. This is uh, the flow between two 
points, right? It's going from this negative end here to this positive end here, right? And that's how this flow is generated uh, by this, what we call electrical potential. So there's electrical potential here, there's electrical potential here, and that potential is what creates that flow of charge, right? Um, now, electrical potential has another unit, so this is going to be our third unit here, uh, that electrical potential uh, electrical potential is what we consider the volt, capital V, right? So now we have coulombs, capital C, amps, capital A, and volts are going to be capital V, and this is our electrical potential. So when uh, a coulomb moves through, when one coulomb moves through um, a potential difference, right, because there is these, these are two potentials here. Now, when the a coulomb, the charge, right, flows through that potential different, there's a gain or loss of one joule of energy, right? So we'll say um, when one coulomb moves through a potential difference, It gains or loses one joule of energy. So a volt, capital V, <clears throat> a coulomb moves through a potential difference, it gains or loses one joule of energy, so it is a joule per coulomb. Right, so volt is one joule per coulomb. Right, one amp is one coulomb per second. Okay, and one coulomb is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. All right, so we'll just kind of revisit our, our half reactions uh, for electrochemistry. So our, our half reaction, so we, we have two reactions um, that happen here. So we have oxidation. Uh, oxidation and reduction reactions. So we use the, we use the half reaction method. We use a half reaction method to split uh, into their oxidation reaction, reduction halves, into the oxidation reduction halves. Uh, and this is how we find, uh, in order to find, so I'll, I'll put that here, um, in order to find the overall equation. So um, these oxidation reduction reactions, so there's three different types of solutions uh, that we can be in. So uh, we can, so they can be uh, acidic, they can be basic, and they can be what we consider uh, neutral solutions. So, uh, acidic solution uh, we're going to have we're we're going to contain uh, excess H plus, right? Basic solution excess hydroxide, right? Uh, neutral solution uh, we're not going to have any uh, hydrogen or hydroxide uh, in that reaction. Okay, um, so um, 
a neutral reaction. A uh, neutral reaction, we're probably looking uh, about Oh, that's going to be acidic. Oh, uh, there we go. That's going to be acidic. That's going to be basic. Now we'll show some neutral ones. Uh, so let's get started with maybe an acidic solution. So just a simple um, acidic solution. So uh, if we have something like, uh, like, you know what? No, here we go. Here's a neutral solution, found one. Uh, so here we have some aqueous ions of mercury, uh, plus we're going to have some silver uh, solid, and we're going to get some mercury solid out of that, plus we're going to get some silver ions out of that. So we'll split this up into two half reactions. Okay? Uh, we take the mercury. ions that are going to make the mercury solid uh, and then we take the silver solid and we're going to get some aqueous ions from that so <clears throat> when we're looking at these uh, reactions okay uh, we do need to balance out the electrons here the charge on here so we look at the the charges on each side here so uh, overall the overall charge here is two plus and the overall charge here is zero so we do have to balance this out with electrons okay uh, and we balance this out by adding electrons to whatever positive charge that we have here uh, so here uh, if i were just to simply add two moles of electrons is that those two electrons <clears throat> counteract these two positive charges and each side is now going to have uh, a negative charge. Uh, so here, if I add one mole of electrons here, my overall charge here is zero, my overall charge here is zero. And then for our overall reaction, because I did right in order to get the overall reaction, we actually have to combine both of these reactions. But we can't do that just yet because what we have to do is we actually have to match these electrons before we can do that. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, we can actually take this here and if we multiply it by two, well, then we, let's see what the result is gonna be. So we're gonna have two gold, uh, two moles of solid, I'm sorry, so it's two moles of solid silver, uh, two moles of ions that are aqueous, plus we have two electrons. And now that these match, is that now we can do this, what we call overall reaction. And we're simply just going to add these two reactions together. Uh, but we can cancel these out, uh, is that we can take these two electrons here and cancel out these two electrons here. And everything else that's left over is what we're going to consider the overall reaction. Uh, so the overall reaction is going to be H, so mercury, 2 plus, aqueous. Uh, you know what? And we didn't even balance this. I should balance that. 2, 2, 2, yeah, there we go. Uh, plus 2, silver. Uh, we're going to get two mercury, moles of mercury, 
plus we're going to get two. So for aqueous. And this is what we're going to consider to be our overall reaction, right? Overall reaction. And now this is where we really just kind of need to be careful uh, when we're looking at oxidation and reduction. Uh, so here, uh, this is going to be reduction, is that this reactant is going to gain two electrons, right? Uh, this reactant loses two electrons, right? So this is going to be reduction, uh, and this will be oxidize. So really just kind of, I guess we'll just, we'll just really just kind of pay attention to where these electrons are. If we see the electrons um, on the left-hand side, that's going to be reduction. If we see the electrons on the right-hand side, that's going to be oxidation. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Now let's, so this, and this is what we consider a, a neutral solution. So let me write that off to the side here. So this would be considered a neutral solution. Uh, I don't have any hydroxide. I don't have any um, hydrogen um, protons floating around it. We consider this just a neutral reaction. Uh, so now let's try an acidic, um, something in an acidic solution. So now we can go to um, gas plus some copper two plus ions, and we're going to get some uh, copper solid. Uh, copper solid plus we'll get some H plus ions. Let's go balance that real quick. And this is going to be, and we'll say, I'll just put a note right here uh, that this is in an acidic solution. So acidic solution meaning I'm going to have excess hydrogen protons in here because uh, we're dealing with an, an acidic solution. So let's go ahead and split this up into two half reactions here. Uh, so the first half reaction will go uh, H2 gas. It's going to go to 2H plus. And then we have uh, copper 2 plus going to copper solid. All right. <clears throat> Uh, so here, uh, I have to take care of the charges because over here, this is going to be zero, and over here, this is two plus because I have two moles of it. So I'm going to simply just add two moles of electrons. Uh, this is two plus. Over here, this is zero. So over here, I'm going to add two moles of electrons. And because the moles of electrons match, there's nothing else that I have to do to this uh, because here, two moles of electrons, two moles of electrons, uh, that these will simply just cancel out. And we can go ahead and just add the rest of it together. And we get H2 gas plus uh, copper plus, and we're going to get 2H plus. plus some copper solid. And looking at this, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Um, this is being oxidized and this is being reduced, right? Uh, we're looking at the electrons, right? Uh, here, we have a loss of two electrons. Uh, we're gaining two electrons, so we have this oxidation uh, reduction going on. Um, so, but they do get more complex. They do get more complex um, where we actually have to, you know, involve some some steps here. Uh, so let's look at one that's just a little more complex. Uh, another one in an acidic solution. So uh, we'll say this is also in an acidic solution here. 
uh, and let's do uh, revisit this. And I know some of this might be a little bit of review, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page here. Uh, so copper, we'll use hydroxide this time, and we'll get some copper solid. And putting this into an, acid, an acidic solution. So because it's in an acidic solution, uh, let's go ahead and divide this into two half reactions. Uh, so we're going to have copper hydroxide going to copper solid. Okay, so there are steps that we do want to follow, uh, and we'll just kind of kind of review those steps here. Uh, so step one for this uh, is that we're going to add water and um, H plus. And we add H plus because it is in an acidic solution. We have excess hydrogen protons. So we're going to add the water to the end that doesn't have any oxygen, right? Um, so it wouldn't make sense to add water. Um, wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make any sense to add water over here because we're going to have to balance this out. So uh, the end that doesn't have any oxygen is where I'm going to stick this. So over here, I'm going to say plus some water plus some H plus. So those is kind of step one here. Uh, step two is we're going to balance the oxygens. Uh, here, I see I have two oxygens. So here, now I've balanced those out. Uh, step three, we're going to balance the hydrogens. We'll balance the hydrogens. Uh, how much do we have here? We have, uh, we have two. We have, uh, oh, we have four over here. So I'm going to put a two over here, and now we have four. And uh, let me do something. Else. There it is. There it is. All right, I'm back. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to do is we need to balance these. Oh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Am I off track? I am off track. Because oh, we're going to scrap this one. Electrochemistry, electrochemistry, you're killing me. Let's back this up. Let's back this up into two half reactions here. I didn't write the other half reaction. We have H2 gas. H plus aqueous for some uh there we go here. Acidic solution. God, my notes are just not great for this one. So we don't need to balance this out. No, we're not adding water to this. Two. 
two electrons. Plus, plus, H plus, and there's my steps. Sorry about that. Let me rewrite this stuff in here. Uh, what are we adding? We're adding water plus, we're adding H plus. Uh, step number two, balance the oxygens. Step number three, balance the hydrogens. Uh, step number four, we'll end up balancing the charges. Uh, so let's see, we were at two hydrogens, balancing oxygens, we're here at two, four, I'm gonna put two. There we go, we're back on track, sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, now we need to balance the charges. So we're gonna balance these electrons, right? Balance the electrons here. Are, how should I write? There should be a better way to, to write that. Uh, balance the charges with electrons. Balance the charge with electrons here. Uh, so overall here, I have a positive two charge and this is neutral, so I'm gonna add two electrons over to this side. <clears throat> so now that we did that, uh, the overall charge is zero on both ends, uh, and I noticed already that I already have two electrons. So because those electrons match, we can simply add those together because these are going to be canceled out. And uh, we can actually go ahead and also cancel these out, right? So those anything that matches on the reactant side and the product side, uh, even though they're not electrons, it says that we can also cancel both of these out. Uh, and then we're left with some H2 gas plus Cu2 going to solid plus two waters liquid. <clears throat> and we have our overall reaction. And then we're gonna have uh, oxidation, reduction. Uh, let's see, we do need to get it more complicated, more complicated. Excess solutions. All right, so here some more. Let's not do basic yet because basic there is an additional step. Uh, so let's do this other one here. We got minus going to all right. <clears throat> and again, we're just going to follow our steps here. Uh, we're going to add. And I'll make sure, let's see, this is acidic. So we're gonna add water and H plus, right? So <clears throat> step number one, I'm gonna add some water, plus I'm gonna add some hydrogen protons. Uh, step number two, balance the oxygen. Step number three, balance the hydrogens. Step number four, balance the charge with electrons. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and balance the oxygens first. Uh, four oxygens here, one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick a four in front over there. Uh, I have eight hydrogens, so I'm gonna put eight hydrogens out here. Uh, let's look at the number of electrons that we're going to need now. Uh, let's see. The overall charge here is two plus. The overall charge here, let's see, there's one minus, eight plus. This is seven plus is the overall charge between these 
uh, between the hydrogens and the um, permanganate here, which means that we don't need to get these to zero. And I, I've said that before. The object here isn't to get both sides to zero. We're not adding electrons to both sides. We're adding electrons simply to just one side of this. Okay, simply to just one side of this. Uh, so if we add five electrons here, well, that means that now we're going to have this plus two overall charge uh, on both sides of those. Uh, let's add another, oh, actually, I didn't even give you the entire reaction. Uh, the entire reaction is, I only gave you half the reaction. I'll write it up here, MnO minus Fe2 plus, Mn2 plus, plus Fe3 plus. So this is the entire reaction here that we're trying to get the overall reaction for. Uh, so now let's take a look at the iron. So iron two plus going to iron three plus. Uh, I don't have to add any water. I don't have to add anything else because because there's no um, oxygen here, right? There's no oxygen here, so I simply don't have to add any water. Uh, I just have to balance this with electrons. So let me go ahead and add one electron here, and that will balance both sides here. Uh, but looking at this five electrons, one electron. So we have to do some additional work and we're gonna to have to multiply this by five. If we multiply by five, now I have five iron two plus, five iron three plus, plus now I have five moles of electrons. And now I can add them up. I can take uh, both of these equations here. Oh, let me move some stuff around here plus five electrons. So we're gonna take these elect, are they gonna take these reactions, we're gonna add both of them together. Uh, we're gonna take, uh, so we have, these will cancel out these. Uh, doesn't look like it can cancel anything else out. So we will have eight. H plus aqueous plus MnO4 minus aqueous plus five iron aqueous. Uh, and I'm going to get aqueous plus four moles of water plus five moles of iron three plus aqueous. Uh, oxidized, reduced. Uh, here, this end was oxidized and up here, this end was reduced. Now, basic solutions require an extra step. So now let's take a look at a basic solution. So basic solution, we're still gonna follow, uh, let me put excess here, excess hydroxide. Uh, we're still gonna follow the same steps. We're still gonna um, add water, and it's plus, we're still gonna balance the oxygen, step three, we're gonna balance the hydrogen, step four, we're going to uh, balance the charges, All right? So we're still gonna have uh, the same one. So let's go ahead and we'll go uh, with this reaction here. This is aqueous plus MnO4 minus, this is also aqueous. ClO3 minus plus MnO2 aqueous. This is all aqueous. All right. So this ends up being all. So let's go ahead and split these up into two half reactions. I have uh, Cl minus 
going to ClO3 minus, and then I have permanganate. Uh, and actually, you know what? I don't think MnO2, I think MnO2 is a solid. Let me change this here. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and add some water. So I'm going to add water to the opposite end where I don't have any oxygen. Plus, I'm going to add some H plus. I'm going to balance the oxygens. Uh, three. So I'm going to put a three in front of here. Uh, let me use a different color there. Uh, then I'm going to balance the hydrogens. I have six hydrogens, so now I'm going to put six hydrogens over here. And now we're going to go ahead and balance out these uh, charges. In order to balance out the charges, <clears throat> um, this is going to be, what do I have here? I have one minus. This is one minus and six plus. So let me add six electrons and each side will have a one minus charge. All right, so that side, that part's taken care of. So let's move on to the next one here. Uh, for the next one, I do need more oxygen on the other side. So I'm gonna add water over here, plus I'm gonna add H plus over here. Balance the oxygens, I have four so I'm going to need another oxygen over here that gives me four, four hydrogens. I have four hydrogens. And let's see, now we need to balance these charges. I have an overall charge of zero uh, on this side, uh, which means we're going to have to add plus three electrons to this side over here. Uh, that'll give me three, four, plus four. Yep, we're good here. Uh, so now I've kind of balanced those charges. And now I need to take a look at the electrons. Before I, I add these together, I see six electrons, three electrons, which means I need to take this end and I need to simply just multiply it by two. Uh, that's going to get us six electrons. It's going to get us eight hydrogens plus two permanganate, uh, two manganese oxide, plus four waters. All right, now we can go ahead and add this together here. We add these together. Uh, let's take care of some of this stuff here. Not, not all of this we're gonna keep. Uh, so let's see what we can cancel out here. I'm gonna take these six electrons and take away these six electrons. Six hydrogens, eight hydrogens. I'm going to cancel out all these six and I have two hydrogens left over. The water, I have four here, three here. I can get rid of all these waters and I will have one water left over. And now I don't think I can cancel anything else out here. So we're going to rewrite this as Cl minus plus two hydrogens plus two permanganate, I'm going to get two MnO2 uh, plus I'm going to have, oh, let's see, we need ClO3 minus and we're going to need one water. <clears throat> but we have to remember basic solution. This means excess hydroxide. And I have excess hydrogen. So the additional step for this is we're going to use the ionization of water, right? Self-ionization of water. We're going to use this in order to convert this into excess hydroxide. So we're going to use this simple reaction here in order to do that. So because I have 2H+, if I add 
two hydroxides here, I will also add two hydroxides over here. What I do to one side of the reaction, I have to do to the other side of the reaction. But these will make two moles of water, right? So that's going to give me two moles of water here on this side. <coughs> well, now that I have two moles of water here and I have one mole of water here, well, we can do some more canceling. I can get rid of these moles of water and here I will simply just have one mole of water. So now we're going to just go ahead and rewrite all of this, right? Uh, and then we get Cl minus plus some water plus two permanganate. Uh, we're going to get two manganese oxide plus some ClO minus aqueous plus two moles of hydroxide. And this is our overall in basic solution. I do have excess hydroxide. So there is an additional step when we're looking uh, to do these reactions in a basic solution is that there's definitely uh, an extra step that we have to, to, to get through. Uh, let's see. So I do kind of have to get us caught up here. Um, so now looking at those, yeah, then we can go back and now we can maybe understand our, our galvanic cells a little bit more. Uh, so let's go back and let's talk about galvanic cells. Get us all cut up. Right, so our galvanic cells are just electrochemical cells, right? They're electrochemical cells, and what happens is we have oxidation, reduction reactions that occur, that if we gave you a reaction, uh, we'll say some silver plus some copper solid, and we're going to get some silver solid, plus we're going to get some copper two plus aqueous ions here. Right, where we have a reduction end and a and an oxidation uh, end that's happening here. So let's see what is uh, uh, oxidized. We're losing a couple of electrons here. Uh, here we're nope. Right, reduction. We're gaining some electrons there. So the oxidation end. Right, uh, the oxidation end is what we're going to consider the anode. So uh, the oxidation, uh, we're going to consider that to be the anode, right? And the reduction, what's gaining these electrons, we're going to consider that to be what we call the cathode. Uh, and the anode and the cathode go back to Oh, let's see, what page, what page? Uh, let's go with uh, maybe eight. Let's see, should be close. Perfect, yep, there it is. So just, just kind of revisit here. Uh, Right, where that, sol that solid um, copper piece there on the left-hand uh, side, that solid copper is what we're going to consider our, our anode, right? The silver uh, 
and is our cathode, uh, and that's because uh, that's the reduction end, right? So uh, we have a, an oxidation end, reduction end, and again, that salt bridge right there in the middle is to kind of complete our circuit, right? Without that, we're, we're not going to we're not going to capture any any voltage, right? Uh, is that these electrons uh, have to have somewhere to go? So we definitely need this uh, this salt bridge here. So let's go back to this end here, and we talk about what we consider cell notation. Cell notation is our representation of that galvanic cell, right? Here's our salt bridge. Here's our cathodes. 0.1 volt, right, is <coughs> we need to be able to represent that without an image, without some physical picture, okay? Um, so in order to represent that, um, we use what we call uh, cell notation, right? So cell notation, we begin with the anode, whatever is being oxidized first, right? So our anode, is this copper solid. So we're going to divide this into a couple halves here. Right, and on the outside here, let's put our, uh, here, this is our cathode. I'm going to, this is our cathode here. This is our anode here. But both of these, right, the cathode, the anode, are what we consider both, they're both electrodes, right? One's a positive end, one's a negative end. Uh, you know, just like uh, we have ions, there's cations, there's anions, but they're just generally known as ions. Well, here it is, cathode, anode, they're both considered uh, electrodes. So uh, let's put our electrode on the end over here, and we're going to start with the anode first. So our anode was simply just the copper solid, right? And that went to copper two plus. And then we had our silver that went to silver solid, right? So what we have here is, let me point this out because there's kind of like an anatomy to this where we're going to put our electrode we're going to have our electrode out here right uh, here we're going to have our electrode uh, the oxidation end right this is where we're going to see our our anode right this is going to be our reduction end uh, this is where we're going to see our cathode and this is what we consider cell notation here. So cell notation without drawing some, <coughs> excuse me, some physical picture is we can use cell notation to kind of represent that physical picture that we're seeing, okay? Uh, so let's try with another one. Uh, we can do the same thing. Let's try, uh, so we can say zinc plus some copper two plus ions, and we're gonna get some zinc ions, <coughs> plus we're gonna get some copper solid. All right, so we define this one and we'll say, all right, so, oop. Well, I'll have to adjust that. Just adding some blank pages. Give me a second here. I don't want to run out of pages. All right. 
So here we have this end here. This end is being oxidized. We have this end here. This end is being reduced. Oxidation end, this is our anode. This is going to be our cathode. So when we write this in cell notation, uh, we're going to put our electrode first. So that is going to be our zinc solid. Draw a straight line down, and we go from zinc solid to zinc 2 plus. We use this double line here, and then we say that Cu2 plus went to our other, we went to copper solid, right? And again, here's our cathode, here's another cathode, <clears throat> those solid ends that we have out there. Um, then we get into situations where we may not have a solid electrode, but we do have aqueous ions that, that can, can transfer electrons, that can generate electricity. We don't necessarily have to have a solid for that, okay? We don't necessarily have to have a solid for that. So what we can look at is we'll take a look at this. We've already seen this reaction uh, just a little while ago. We balanced it did our oxidation reduction halves here. Uh, and you'll notice everything here is aqueous. Right, except for the water, but we do have a bunch of uh, aqueous stuff here. So let's go ahead and, and uh, split this up into the half reactions here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of the moles of uh, stuff that we have too much. So here we can say that we have uh, iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus, And then we have MnO4 plus some H plus, going to MN2 plus, and we're not even going to worry about the water here. <clears throat> so looking at this, uh, what do we see here? We see that this end, uh, we're losing electrons, so this end is being oxidized. This end is being reduced. Uh, oh, MnO4, do we put in any electrons? Uh, plus one electron. Uh, jump the gun here. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this one over here. Uh, plus, we need plus five electrons. Uh, the reason I did that. Um, I, I can do this by looking at it, but I want you guys to be able to notice it. Uh, <clears throat> I did that so we can see the location of these electrons. Um, so by bringing the hydrogen down, I don't have to worry about the water because the water is neutral. Uh, it's not going to participate anyways. Uh, but here, uh, by doing so, I can see where these electrons are going. Uh, so this end's going to be oxidized. This end's going to be reduced. This is my anode, and this end is my cathode. But we also have to take notice uh, that the electrodes here, I don't have a solid electrode. If we take a look at this galvanic cell here, we'll notice, right, that's a solid silver piece, solid copper piece. So what happens here is we end up having to <clears throat> use, um, let's see if I can find an image here. We use a platinum wire, and a platinum wire is going to help us move these electrons around. So that's going to be our electrode. Our electrode on each end, we're just going to use a platinum, a solid platinum wire there in order to move these electrons around. So when you have a situation where you don't have uh, a solid, um, 
on the oxidized or reduction reaction is that we're going to end up using the, the uh, electrode. And you'll notice where we put the electrode. The electrodes always go on the outside, right? Here's my electrode here. Right? Here's my electrode here. And we're all just going to generally just put those on the outside. So we're going to use a platinum electrode. So I'm going to put PT solid. <clears throat> and then I'm going to need the oxidation end. So what happened during oxidation? Uh, we went from iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus aqueous aqueous. <clears throat> so that's that represents this half of the cell. That represents what's going on. That represents what's going on in, in one half of the cell. <clears throat> and the reduction end, uh, our reduction end, we're going to have the permanganate plus we're going to have the, the hydrogen protons, and we're going to have the manganese 2+. Plus. Um, in the cell, we don't have to have a balanced reaction in the cell. I know that maybe you guys are looking at, hey, but there's eight hydrogen protons. But for the cell notation, we're not worried about balancing you know, how much manganese, iron, uh, anything like that. We're, we're not worried about the number of moles we have there uh, for that. Uh, so we put that oxidation reaction, anything that, that's concerned with the oxidation reaction, uh, and then we put our electrode at the end. Uh, and that's going to be, again, another platinum electrode that we'll put solid here. So again, yeah, I realize that there's eight here, and I realize there's only one there, uh, but we don't have to bring in the number of moles into the cell notation uh, that we have there. Uh, Let's see, let's see, one more, one more. How about uh, some H2 gas, copper solid. Nope, we'll go copper two plus. Then we can go to copper solid. Uh, plus, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so let's split this up into two half reactions here. So I got uh, H2 gas, and I'm going to get 2H plus aqueous, and we got uh, copper 2 plus going to copper solid, and we'll say uh, plus two electrons. It's going to be plus two electrons. Uh, is that here? Well, we're looking at the oxidation end where we're losing two electrons. So uh, here, this is oxidation. This is going to be reduction. This is going to be my anode. This is going to be my cathode. All right, so now let's go and we'll write cell notation for this. So cell notation, um, I only see that I have one solid. One solid, the other one's gas, which means I'm going to need, for the anode, I'm going to need a platinum electrode here because I don't have a solid on that end. So let's start off with just writing uh, a platinum electrode as a solid before and that goes on the outside, right? Uh, so our platinum solid here, we're going to go, uh, oh, excuse me. Platinum solid, uh, we'll go, uh, what is this? H2 gas, uh, H2 gas, we'll put uh, H plus aqueous, and then we'll have some copper, T plus, and our electrode goes on the outside. Actually, we probably could just put a comma here. Uh, either one, I would, I would accept either answer. 
uh, comma or that straight line there uh, with our electrodes. But this represents two halves of two halves of this uh, cell that we have. <clears throat> Now, when we're looking at these reactions, uh, we're going to begin to calculate this charge here. So if we go back to this where it says the 0 0.046, that voltmeter, that voltmeter is giving us the cell potential. Right? That's what we call the cell potential. So we need to calculate this cell potential. So in order to calculate that cell potential, so here's my cell, right? This is my cell, and we need to calculate the, the voltage that that's going to produce. So in order to do that, we do have a formula, E of the cell. E of the cell is equal to the potential of the cathode minus the electrical potential of the anode. So let's go ahead and look these up. These are all in the back of the book. Uh, appendix L. Yes, Appendix L. So here let's take a look at uh, H2 gas going to H plus. So we can scroll down here, we're going to find hydrogen, hydrogen, oh, you know what, no, we have to, as far as hydrogen is concerned, we use hydrogen in order to um, understand standard, what we call standard reduction potentials. Um, so as far as standard reduction potentials. Um, we use standard reduction potentials in order to determine better oxidizing and, and reducing um, agents, right? So our, our electric potential So our electric potential is the difference of two electric potentials, right? So this cell here is the difference of these two points, right? It's the difference of those two points. <clears throat> well, when it comes to hydrogen, we use hydrogen as the standard. Right? We use hydrogen uh, as a standard in what we call a standard hydrogen potential. So the standard hydrogen potential, uh, and they use SHE for short, standard hydrogen potential, we understand that that cell potential is equal to simply just zero volts. Is that when we take these ions plus two electrons and we get hydrogen gas, that this is equal to zero volts. And we use that to calculate other electrical potentials. If we can, if we can use a standard hydrogen potential uh, and understand that that's just simply going to be zero, is that we can calculate all of the other uh, potentials here. And this is where we get this list from. So this list here, this this half reaction for these cell potentials are all based on standard hydrogen potentials, where we put these ions or we put these solids and we against a, a hydrogen potential, which is simply just zero, and calculate that voltage. And now that we have these standard potentials for each one of these, is that we can then take them, we can then take it and calculate potentials of other anodes, cathodes, um, that are going to be giving electrons or, or uh, taking these, some of these electrons. So if we take a look at, uh, let's see here, 
So a reaction such as this, where we're going to take some manganese solid plus some tin nitrate, and we're going to get some manganese nitrate. plus some tin solid. So because we use this standard hydrogen potential in order to calculate all of these, is that now we can calculate the electrical potential, the cell potential, by using those standard potentials. And again, we're going to be using that E of the cell is equal to the cathode minus the anode. So let's go ahead and separate these into two different reactions first. So uh, we have MN solid going to MN2 plus, and we have SN2 plus going to SN solid. And you'll notice I didn't use these. Why? Because they're simply just going to be canceled out. If I were to split these up into ions, this is what happens. So let me get plus two nitrates over here, plus two nitrates. What's going to happen to them? Well, they're going to get canceled out anyway. They're just, they're just bystanders, right, that we don't need to. So we kind of need to recognize that those are just bystanders and they're not part of the actual oxidation reduction that's happening here. So we'll put plus two electrons. Uh, we'll put plus two electrons. Uh, here, this end is going to be my oxidizing end. This is going to be my reduction end. This is my anode. This is my cathode. <clears throat> so now we just need the cell potentials for that. So if we look up the cell potentials for that, we have manganese to manganese two plus. So here's manganese, and that is negative 1.185. Negative 1.185. And our cathode, 10. Uh, and be cautious because there are, are the, I'm looking at two different ones here, but I need the uh, tin going to tin solid, negative 0.1375. Negative 0.1375. So our E of the cell is equal to the cathode, negative 0.1375. minus negative 1.185. And this ends up being a positive 1.05. And we have our cell potential here. So when we look at these cell potentials here, we have to understand here uh, positive, oh, and I should put volts here. Let's not forget that, that the voltage here is 0 0.105 volts. Uh, positive potential is equal to spontaneous reaction. Negative potential is equal to non-spontaneous reactions. All right, so let's take a look at some more here. Uh, let's see. Let me give you this cell. So we'll go with copper solid, uh, copper 2 plus, and we'll go with some gold 3 plus solid. All right. <clears throat> So here, uh, we already know that this is our anode, right? This is going to be oxidized. This is our cathode. Uh, this is going to be reduced. 
so when we're writing this, so let's hear, uh, we're going to start with, uh, I know that this is going to be oxidized. So I'm going to take my copper solid plus my gold three plus, and we're going to get copper two plus plus some um, gold solid. All right, so let's split these up into two half reactions here. Uh, we're going to get copper solid copper two plus plus two electrons. Uh, then we're going to have some gold plus plus three electrons, and we're going to get some gold solid. So I've split these up into two half reactions. Um, should we should we should we? We're going to need to do that anyways. Yep, yeah, let's go ahead and get the overall reaction for this. Uh, so because my electrons don't match, I'm going to multiply this one by 2. And I'm going to take this one and multiply it by 3. That way, uh, we can have six moles of electrons that, that transfer in the reaction. Uh, so we have... Copper solid, three copper two plus plus six moles of electrons, and then I'm going to have six moles of electrons plus two gold ions plus two gold gold. All right, so now, right. These can cancel out. I have my overall reaction, uh, three copper solid plus two gold ions. And we're going to get three plus two gold. All right. Um, that's, this isn't going to, um, this isn't to, I did this just for a little bit of practice. Uh, doing all these steps doesn't out, help us answer the, the, the cell potential. Uh, the cell potential could simply just be done from up here. I think I did a lot more work because uh, I wanted you guys to see, uh, we just kind of need a little bit of practice still. Uh, but I can tell from up here uh, that this is going to be oxidized and this is going to be reduced. All right, uh, and I could just, I, I can tell from up there, but I wanted just to kind of do this additional work here just to get us a little bit of extra practice. Um, so our E of the cell is equal to E of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Uh, this is my anode, this is my cathode, uh, let's go ahead and look those up. So I need uh, copper going to copper 2 plus. CU, CU, copper going to copper 2 plus is point, positive 0.34. equals positive 0.34. Gold going from 3 plus. Uh, there's two of them. I need to 3 plus to gold. 1.498. Positive. One 1.348. Let me double check. One point. No. 1.498, 1.498, all right, so we're going to take the cathode, 1.498 minus 0.34, and this is equal to one five eight <clears throat> and this is a 
spontaneous reaction. So this is a spontaneous reaction. <coughs> Then I think I think we're finally catching up here, uh, getting back into uh, uh, Nernst equation. Um, so our Nernst equation. Let's see here. Uh, but this is how we can go ahead and you know calculate these cell potentials here. Uh, just it, it really important again. I don't know how I, uh, much I can stress this, but uh, you know, to keep these electrons in place, oxidation reduction has because uh, just a simple mistake will just give you completely wrong answers there. Uh, so I just don't know how much I can stress that out because even uh, myself uh, lost track of that. So <clears throat> Nernst equation. So nursing equation helps us determine cell potentials that are in non-standard conditions, right? As if we look at these here, right? That's what this. Remember, that's what this little dot means here, right? Uh, is this has happened at um, standard temperature, standard temperature like 25 degrees uh, Celsius, one atmosphere. Uh, so just under standard conditions here. So Nernst equation. Uh, will help us determine cell potentials in non standard conditions. Non standard conditions, right? There, there's a relationship. There's a relationship between the cell potential between free energy and between the equilibrium constant. Right? That we do have <coughs> um, a relationship uh, between all of those. So again, this is probably going to be review, uh, but I'm still just going to go ahead and go over it, uh, is that we have what we consider first off just electrical work. Electrical work, and I'm going to use this capital W, subscript E-L-E, -E, right? So that's going to represent electrical work, right? And electrical work is nothing more than volts, capital V, multiplied by charge in what we call coulombs. And coulombs, uh, well, these we're going to represent. So the volts plus charge in coulombs is equal to joules, right? So we have volts multiplied by charge in coulombs and this is equal to joules. So if we rearrange this formula we can say that coulombs is equal to joules over volts. Joules over volts because we need this uh, to understand Faraday's constant and we'll use this F here for Faraday's constant. Uh, so Faraday's constant is equal to 9.648 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per mole. And we can translate that into, <clears throat> because we know what a coulomb is, right? We know what a coulomb is. So if we replace that, uh, we have 9.648 times 10 to the 4 joules per volt per mole, All right? And that's going to be Faraday's constant there. So when we're looking at this uh, and we have, um, so if we have
X number of moles we have X number of moles uh, then the total charge is equal to the number of moles times Faraday's constant and when we're talking about the number of moles the where n is equal to the number of moles of electrons transferred the number of moles of electrons that are transferred so we have e of the cell equal to our work <coughs> over the number of moles over over the total charge over the total charge and so we can translate that as uh, work electrical work is equal to times E of the cell and this will give us our electrical work electrical work and when we look at electrical work this negative ELE this is work done by work done by the system work done by the system um, work done by the system and I'm, I'm going to put cell here right work done by the system work done uh, by the galvanic cell to to the surroundings so work done by the cell to the surroundings and if we remember anything about free energy, right? Free energy delta G, right? This is energy available for work. Energy that's available for work. This is the maximum amount of energy, right? Maximum amount of energy. Um, and we're going to use this. So we're going to say uh, delta G is equal to, I'm going to give you this equation here. <clears throat> so this is going to be one equation that we're going to need, right? So we're going to need this equation here. And if we go back a, a couple chapters here, uh, we know that delta G equals negative RT natural log of k <clears throat> well using both of these here using both of this information here uh, we can rearrange this uh, we know what de what delta g is delta g is equal to n Faraday's constant times e of the cell and this is equal to negative rt natural log of K. Then if I rearrange this equation, uh, we can get E of the cell is equal to negative RT over N Faraday's constant times natural log of K. <clears throat> and another equation that I am just going to give you, uh, one that we're going to be needing we'll say E of the cell is equal to um, 0 0.0592 volts over N, N being the number of, uh, or the moles of electrons, and we're going to say the log of K. Uh, I don't want to do all that work to, to translate that, um, but uh, here is going to be another formula that you guys are going to need. Okay, um, and now since we have the log of K, uh, we can actually rearrange this one more time. 
or we can say the log of k. Well, I mean, let me rewrite this this way. How about we say um, e of the cell times n divided by 0 0.0592 volts is equal to the log of k. And when we rearrange this, we can say k is equal to 10 uh, n times e of the cell divided by 0 0.0592 volts, which is so we have a relationship here. So we have a relationship between E of the cell, between K, delta G, uh, is that we can look at equations like this. So let's go ahead and calculate this here. Um, calculate this. So we just have, I'm probably going to go, uh, if you have to go, I understand, I'm probably going to go about maybe 10 minutes over, and I think that will just completely finish off everything that you guys need to know for chapter 16, um, anything that would be on the uh, exam. Um, so let me just, so we'll go calculate, calculate delta G, and... The equilibrium constant. We're going to calculate free energy and the equilibrium constant. So let me write that a little nicer. We're going to calculate delta G and the um, equilibrium constant from this reaction here. So we'll say uh, tin solid plus copper 2 plus. We're going to have tin 2 plus plus some copper. Plus, we're just going to use one electron there. So this is aqueous, 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 and then we have a solid here. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and split these up into two reactions. So uh, I have 10 solid going to 10 2 plus. I'm going to add two electrons here. All right, that's taken care of. Uh, and then I'm going to have... Actually, I think I balanced it a little bit too early up there. Copper 2 plus to copper plus, and I'm going to add, oh, let's add an electron on the other side, plus one electron. And again, just as a reminder, I'm not trying to get both sides to zero. I just need to get both sides to have the, the an equal charge, right? So this is going to be plus one, and with this electron and the two plus, that's also going to be plus one. All right, uh, but I do have to do some rearranging here. Uh, I only see one electron here, so I'm going to multiply this by two. Gives me two electrons. Going to give me two copper two plus. Uh, we're going to get two copper plus. All right. <clears throat> I don't think we'll need the overall, we're not going to need the overall reaction here, uh, but let's just go ahead and do it anyway. So our overall reaction, uh, now that we canceled out those electrons, we're going to have Sn solid plus 2 copper 2 plus. I, I balanced a little early for you guys. I, I, let me put it like this. There we go. Uh, then we're going to get copper 2 plus, oh, we're going to get some tin, plus we're going to get 2 copper plus. All right, so as far as oxidation, reduction, anode, cathode, uh, here we're losing two electrons. This is going to be our, oxi our <coughs> oxidation end. This is going to be our anode. Uh, this is going to be our reduction end. This is our cathode. So let's look up tin going to tin 2. Tin going to tin 2, negative 0 0.1375.
E of the anode, negative 1.375, nope, point, point 0.1375. Uh, and then our cathode, E of the cathode is going to equal copper 2 plus going to copper 1 plus. Copper 2 plus, that's going to be positive 0.153. Positive 0.153. All right, so now we're going to have our cathode minus the anode. So here, E of the cell is equal to positive 0.153 minus negative 0.13. Seven five. <clears throat> point one five three. Oh, clear. Point one five three minus negative point one three seven five gives me a positive point two nine zero five. Uh, spontaneous reaction because it is positive. I'm just going to write a little note here. Spontaneous reaction. But now we, we have E of the cell. And because we have E of the cell, we're going to use one of these three here, right? So these, are the, these are the formulas that you guys need to know. You need to know this one, this one, and this one. And now that we know E of the cell, right? I know E of the cell is that now we can calculate K. So E of the cell, uh, we're going to say that K is equal to 10. Uh, how many moles of electrons did we transfer? N is equal to the number of moles of electrons. So N is equal to 2, right? I'm going to say N is equal to 2. So we're going to have 2. Oops. 2 times the E of the cell, which is 0 0.2905, <clears throat> divided by 0 0.0592, and let's see what we get. Ten. Is a two times point two nine zero five. You guys can also verify this with me. Divided by point zero five nine two. Zero five nine two. Uh, I got. 6.5 times 10 to the 9. Is that what you can Anybody just verify that for me? 6.5 times 10 to the 9. And now that we got K, well, we can figure out uh, delta G. For delta G is equal to this formula here. is that delta G is equal to 2 times uh, nobody's able to calculate that, verify that for me? That it is 6.5 times 10 to the 9? Uh, yeah, I got that. It is okay. Uh, so we know what F is. Yeah. Oh, good morning. <clears throat> right, we know what F is. Uh, I gave you that formula up here, so we know what F is. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. 
uh, 9.648 times 10 to the 4 uh, joules over volts times the number of moles. Uh, and this is going to be times E of the cell, which is 0 0.2905 volts. Cancels, this cancels. Uh, and I will have joules per mole. And this is negative. I can't forget the negative there. So negative 2 times 9.648 times 10 to the 4. Minus point two nine zero five. Nope. Yep. Zero five. And this is equal to negative fifty six point. Nope. Five six zero five five. I'll just put negative fifty six. Negative 5.6 times 10 to the 4. All right. <coughs> so negative 5.6 times 10 to the 4. Uh, but here we do, and this is in joules per mole. I need to write this clear. This is just negative 5, 6, 0, 5, 5 joules per mole. All right, uh, but we do have a negative delta G, right? What does negative delta G represent, right? Negative delta G is equal to spontaneous. So here it matches spontaneous, spontaneous, that we have those reactions there. Um, and now we kind of have to look at what we consider non-standard um, conditions, right? Because th this is why we use Nernst equation. So this is actually um, Nernst equation right here. So Nernst equation is we're going to take E of the cell in non-standard conditions, uh, and this is going to be E of the cell minus 0 0.0592 volts over n times the log of q. q is the equilibrium constant, right, uh, when, when it's not, <clears throat> right, in non-standard conditions here. So let's see if we can calculate one of these out real quick. Um, and I think that, that is going to finish it off here. So uh, let's calculate this cell potential. So we're going to calculate the cell potential in non-standard conditions. All right, non-standard conditions. So let me give you an actual cell here. So we'll say aluminum solid would go aluminum three plus. Uh, we'll make this aqueous. Oh, and along with being aqueous, uh, we'll add what 0.15 molar. And then we have some copper T plus that is aqueous, and this is going to be 0 0.025 molar. And we have some copper solid. All right, so let's translate this into so here, uh, this is the oxidation end, right? This is the anode, this is reduction, this is our cathode over here on this end. So we're going to have aluminum solid going to aluminum 3 plus. And we're going to have copper 2 plus going to copper solid. How do I know that's the right way to write it? Yeah, this is the way to write it right uh, because I know the oxidation then is going to lose three electrons. So here it is. We lost three electrons. Here it is. We gained 
to electrons. Um, but because we need n here, I, I do need to. We need to balance this. We have to find out what n is. As n is the total number of electrons that we have, uh, three and two. I'm going to take this, these here, multiply by two, multiply by three, so that I can get my electrons to match. So we have three aluminum solid plus three. Aluminum, three plus, uh, plus six electrons. And down here I have six electrons plus, oh, wrong value. This is not three, this is two. This is three. Three copper, two plus ions. Three copper moles of copper solid. So now, I know what the value of n here, right? So n is equal to six, right? I'll draw some arrows here, right? n is equal to six. So now if we go ahead and use this equation here, um, well, you know what? No, we should figure out what q is. We need, we're we gonna need to know what q is. So remember q, q is equal to concentration of products over concentration of reactants. All right, well, let's go and see what our overall reaction is. Our overall reaction, I'll, I'll write this back, but let's get the overall reaction here. We're gonna add those together. I'm gonna get two aluminum solid. Plus three copper ions, this is aqueous, two plus, we're gonna get two plus aqueous plus three moles of copper solid. All right, so Q is equal to concentration of products over concentration of reactants, but we're not using solids, right? We don't put those into our, our equilibrium values for, to, to solve for Q, to solve for K. Uh, so we just use the ions, right? So Q is equal to, uh, Q is equal to concentration of aluminum squared over concentration of copper cubed. And we know what those values are. I gave you those values. So we're gonna highlight them here, right? So aluminum is 0.15, copper is 0 0.20 or 0 0.025. So Q is equal to 0.15 squared divided by 0 0.025 cubed. And this is equal to, one thousand four hundred and forty. So now I know what Q is. So now that I know what Q is, we can use an Ernst equation. All right, we can use Nernst equation. Uh, we're gonna figure out the E of the cell. So we're gonna say E of the anode. And our anode is, let's see here, this is oxidized, so aluminum to aluminum three plus. And I have negative 1.662. Uh, e of the cathode is equal to uh, copper. I think we've seen this before. I hope it's gonna be positive 0.34. I'm not even gonna look that one up. Uh, so we go cathode minus the anode. So E of the cell is equal to 0.34 minus negative 1.66 uh, 
uh, two. And this is equal to uh, 2.00, 2.002. All right, so we have E of the cell, we have Q, and we can use Nernst equation here in order to figure out the E of the cell in non-standard conditions. All right, so here, E of the cell is equal to, uh, I'm going to write the whole thing out here. E of the cell minus 0 0.0592 volts over N times the log of Q. What does this translate into? 2.002 minus 0 0.0592 Oh, I should put volts here. I always forget volts. Volts over uh, n is equal to 6. So over 6 times the log of 1,440. 2.002 minus 0.0592 divided by six times of one, four, four, zero equals positive 1.97 volts. And I should, let me put E of the cell right there. So E of the cell, so, oop. E of the cell, non-standard conditions, positive 1.97 volts. So uh, that's all going to be information that you're going to need. So uh, I've kind of I'll kind of highlight the um, right. So you're going to need to know this formula. You'll need to know this formula, this formula, this formula and Faraday's constant. Uh, so I'll just keep those highlighted there. Uh, as far as the exam goes, I, I, would, I would base them off of uh, these notes here. Let me see. 